Morning. Hello and good morning. It's about 20 past six and it's time to let the chickens out, which I've just done. We normally let them kind of roam around in their yard for an hour or so in the morning before we let them out to properly free range. If you can't tell by the noise they're making, they want to be let out now. But it's very early, I'm still very tired. I need some coffee and actually I might just go back to bed for a bit. But in this video, we're gonna do a bit of a chicken coop tour and show you some more chicken TV. We've had these guys for a while now and we've made a few improvements to the coop and we've learned a few things about keeping chickens. So we'll cover a bunch of stuff chicken related, but I need to wake up first. See you in a bit. Okay girls, let's go. So this is one of the most exciting moments of the day for the chickens. They get their morning seed, which is a mix of all sorts of different things, including wheat and oats, corn, like a cracked corn. Uh, there's some pellets in there, which have got some additional calcium and a few other things as well. There might be some soy in there. And we soak the feed overnight because it makes it a little bit more palatable for them. And we've got a couple of chickens with not scissor beak, like a serious issue, but like slightly kind of crossed beak, uh, which makes it a bit harder for them to peck at small things. Plus also soaking the food uh, makes it ferment slightly, uh, which is good for them in terms of internal digestion, just like with human people or people. So this is their morning round of seed and they'll probably get some treats and bits and pieces. And of course they're gonna be foraging all day because these are freedom chickens. They have the full run of the place, apart from the areas that we've fenced off, which we'll show you a bit later on. They go wherever they please all day, eating grass and seeds and bugs and all sorts of stuff. So they're very happy chickens. So as part of our daily routine, this is this is the most involved part of it, which is getting them up in the morning. But we do have lots to show you in this video. We're gonna do like the whole day of chicken chores, but also we'll give you a tour of the coop that we built because we didn't really show you all of the details of that when we built it a few weeks ago. Yeah, nice one. Need to top that one up. Do this one. This one it just needs filling up. So we're still on the whole manual feeding and watering thing because to be honest it's really not a big deal. We've got three waterers, one inside of the, the run or the cage, one in the fenced yard area and then one outside somewhere on the land that we move around quite frequently depending on where the chickens are and make sure we keep it in the shade. Um, but we really fill these things up only once every few days because they hold, well, they all hold different amounts, like five liters, eight liters, 15 liters, I think, or 10 liters. And whilst the chickens drink very frequently, they're not consuming like liters and liters and liters of water every day. So um, we clean them out to make sure that there's no 
bits of wood chip or dust or grass or whatever in them because uh, they do kick up a lot of that kind of stuff but uh, yeah it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward uh, much simpler than building a whole automated system which would then only be in one location so we're happy with this for now and I just need to refill the rest of them morning morning oh you have too, snacks too early for the filming I haven't even had coffee yet likewise and I've been up since six that's normally me just I know so that the viewers are aware <laughs> What have they got as a snack? Um, the very last of some peas that are finished in the garden. So let's call it pea shoots. Pea shoots. <laughs> Alrighty, it's about 10 o'clock and since we did all the morning chicken chores the girls have done their important business for the day or at least three of them have but now that they've vacated their house and the cage and the yard I thought we'd do a bit of a tour and show you some of the things that we built into this and some things that we like some things that we may want to improve in the future Is that your poop stick? <laughs> <laughs> it is. So let's uh, talk okay. through some of these features. Let's start with the ventilation doors because they're already open nicely. Yeah. So in here we have a couple of holes in each side and a dowel. When that's not in use, let's go in here and then the doors can come down. This is warped a little bit. Yeah, this one doesn't really close anymore. It's, but we it can, can fix just that. just close. There you go. Um, so we just have these open during the day, so it's going to be 36 degrees today. Um, that's quite warm. Yeah, and that's Celsius. And it, it doesn't get warm in here at all. Uh, like people think it's going to be like a hot box, but it's, it's not. It's actually quite fine with well, these ventilation bits. It's enough to get a bit of air in. But also the roofing material deflects the heat. Exactly. The Onduline has some reflective properties and we've already tested this with our shed, kitchen shed, which is why we know it was safe to use for the chickens. Um, so yeah, two doors, dowel system. They also have variable opening amounts yeah, as well. The different holes are for different heights. And we tend to shut these at night um, because the temperature here does drop, though the last few nights it hasn't. Yeah, it was um, open last night. And we did leave it, yeah, for the last couple of nights. Um, but yeah, again, I, we saw this. I think it was Carolina, Carolina Coops who do something we've, like this. We've stolen many of their ideas. <laughs> they make good coops. They do make good coops. Uh, ours uh, is not as fancy as theirs. No, not, not really. But we've got doors in a door. Doors which in a door. We can open for cleaning and general access. Well, also, what I often do when the chickens are in laying and they've been a little bit too long, I can come and sneak peek into the. <laughs> <laughs> we had a bit of drama this morning. We with did. Them. I, the, the one day that we want to film a chicken tour, there is laying drama with hens laying and staying and not letting anyone else in and then another one can't wait and jumping on the one that's already laid. <sighs> Chicken. Um, so, this is my... Um, olive harvesting stick. It is an olive harvesting device. It was given to us by a friend because uh, she used the last olive harvest or a similar one and said it was very good and so she picked us up one. Um, but, it has turned out to be a very good scatterer. I don't know how you want to say it. So the whole idea... It's a poop rake. It's a poop rake. Okay. <laughs> the whole idea with this door here is it's part of a, what's called a deep litter system. And the idea is you don't pull out the litter tray bedding very often. 
Um, some people do it like once a year. I don't know if we'll get through to a year. Currently in here up to about this level. Um, and so it can go all the way up to this level. Um, and all you need to do is just sprinkle a little bit more on top and kind of spread it over the poop. Um, and it doesn't smell. It smells now because it's very warm and I haven't done this for over a week. Um, but once a week, just come in and sprinkle a bit. Almost like a composting toilet, right? Where you use the toilet and then you put something over it to cover it and job done. Someone told us about putting tobacco leaves in here to help with the mites. So we've done that as well. Uh, just shredded them with my hand and threw it in there. With the pine shavings, it also absorbs all the moisture out of the poop and stuff. So very quickly it's turning into a lovely compostable material. And that's the whole point with the, the deep litter system. And eventually I'll be able to uh, fold this down, get the wheelbarrow, scrape it into the wheelbarrow, turn around and put it straight into the compost. Um, but it's as if we planned it this way. Almost. And that's it. <laughs> We're not stealing your eggs. <laughs> You did that already. One thing that I learned recently is this noise that she's making. It's often called the laying song. And I thought that they were doing that during the egg laying process. But apparently it's something that they do afterwards as a way to uh, scare potential predators away from the site where they just laid the egg. So there you go. Maybe you knew that, but I didn't. Now this has got a lot more wood chipping up there. Uh and poop. It's still a long way to go. Cool. So I need to get out of the sun, but yeah, right. let's talk about the um, <laughs> talk about the the doors. The doors. The the semi manual doors. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I built two doors that are on a pulley system, and it's just easier to demonstrate. Um, and they both have their controls outside of the hen house, so that in the morning and the evening we have to go in. So this one controls the door between the enclosed run and their outdoor enclosure. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. We did have a problem when we got some rain and the timber swelled. Swell, swelled? Swelled. Became swollen. Yes, became swollen. Because that sounds weird, swelled. Um, and so what I had to do was just plane on the edges to just bring it in a little bit and kind of chamfer. Uh, on the sides and then it was fine so that's that one and we had a similar issue with the hen house one but then it fixed itself and I would like to get an automatic chicken door yes yeah, so that will stop me getting up at six o'clock because because you don't like to get up at six o'clock. I do not like to get up at <laughs> six o'clock. I'm much more of a like 11 o'clock kind yeah. of person, but that doesn't happen anymore. And we, we will eventually, I think. Um, like many things, it's always good to do it manually first to learn things. We did the same with the garden. We were watering by hand for the first year and it taught us about watering. Um, this is teaching us a little about chickening. Um, <laughs> and I like in the mornings not every day, but some days to only open the house door and leave them in the run because then they eat the pellets, the layer pellets, which have a, a have lots of their stuff in them that they don't get from free ranging, like calcium, for example. And it forces them to eat a little bit of that. And then a little bit later, we let them out um, to run around and be chickens. In terms of the calcium, we do also give them uh, some of the eggshells. And I know that there is uh, a controversy perhaps in terms of whether you should do that because then sometimes they can start eating the eggs. We've not had a problem with that yet. The alternative is oyster shells, but I've literally not seen them for sale anywhere in the local area. So we like to keep it natural and like a enclosed loop system where they lay eggs, we eat the eggs, we give them the shells and it helps them to uh, put that calcium back into future shells. They don't eat them that fast so we put the rest of them into the compost because the soil also benefits from calcium too. So it is stinking hot. It is stinking hot. It's 20 past 10 in the morning. The sun is over here above so off to the right of this coop. It will spin around and eventually set over there 
and that is why we put the hen house at this end. So at the moment, this is casting quite a lot of shadow over here. And a little bit later, there will be some shadow in their enclosure. But for most of the day, they get the shade of the orange tree. And then for really late in the day, we ended up putting up these two, a hessian sack unpicked, uh, to again, cast some, some shadow. So that is there if for any reason we're off the farm and we've put them inside, we know that they have shade. Same with the dust bathing area. We made this nice dust bathing area, which they do use, but they also have dust baths behind the compost bays, under every single tree that we seem to have. Uh, <laughs> everywhere that they want to dust bathe, they just create their own little area. So I think that's the main features of the, the house and the enclosure. But of course, we also have what we call the chicken yard, which is a fenced area. Uh, my sister and cat actually put this in when they were visiting. So thank you very much for that, girls. But yeah, we have this area for them if we need to go out or if we go out for dinner or go to the store, or go to pick up building materials. Or if we're having dinner and the chickens are <laughs> annoying it. They like to jump on the tables and the chairs and eat our food. Nigella, one of the black ones, even likes to drink wine and gin and anything else that we anything might be in glass, enjoying, yeah. anything in a glass. Um, so we have this area for them, which is also got really great shade from the big orange tree. Chickens aren't supposed to eat citrus, but they're smart enough to not eat it, even if it lands on the floor. I don't think there's any in there at the moment. No, pick we pick them up fairly regularly anyway. This little yard for them is perfect, so they have a safe space uh, that we can kind of, you know, keep them out of the way if we need to. However, there were some challenges with them flying out of the yard and maybe Kylie can talk you through some of the some of the iterations we went through with the fencing and particularly the gate that you may be able to see behind me. Uh, looks like we have spinach growing here from feeding them spinach. Is it that looks, spinach? It looks like... No. Yes. <laughs> really? Spinach going to seed. It's the same as the spinach I harvested yesterday. That's crazy. I built a gate and originally the gate didn't have any of this fencing on it. It just had the top of the gate. And then the chickens would just fly up, perch on there for a second and then fly over. So then I added this bit thinking, oh, if it's just a single wire, they won't have anywhere to perch. That is not true. Anyone who says a single wire stops chickens, it does not. They just landed on the single wire. They landed wire. on that, no problems. Then I put a piece like this, hardware cloth, on here in the same kind of configuration coming inwards and then they would just fly up and land on that and also so then I had to extend it all the way up here before I put this on we did clip the wing one wing of Poppy she is the escape artist and even with the clip wing this on she still escaped so then I added this we added this sorry no, no you did add that yes but what's interesting is that this this here, which is now like it's taller than you, right? So it's what five foot three, Two, four, three. something. Yep. Only in that area above the gate, where it's that high, because this is nowhere near that high. But they don't seem to jump over any of this. And then this kind of hardware cloth bit only goes up, uh, only goes to that that post there. The rest of this is just all uh, is it's just open. We have had two other escapes. So Nigella did work out how to fly over the back fence and onto the big earth pile, but then forgot how to do it again. <laughs> and Cumin once, but we didn't see how she did that, was out without permission. Um, but mostly that's only if they've not been out that day. Like if we let them out in the morning and they're free to roam and then we put them back in the afternoon, they don't seem to escape so much. It's really if from the beginning of the day they've been kept in, then they're eager to get out because they're so used to being out all the time. We did have to fence our veg garden. Oh yeah, let's go and have a look at that. <laughs> so yes, one of the things that we like to do is the bare minimum possible, not because we're lazy, but just we like to observe and see what happens and then take action based on need rather than put in loads of work and loads of infrastructure and loads of stuff and then maybe we don't end up needing that because we are very busy. We have a big renovation project on the go. We have a huge garden to tend to now, and we've got to keep all the land in check as well. So any unexpected projects have a knock-on effect. So we built 
the world's most sketchy <laughs> garden fence. It is a roll of, what was it, 100 meters of chicken wire? Yeah. Uh, I don't no, think we used the 50, whole roll. 50 meters. Uh, 50 meters of chicken wire. And we just cable tied it to these existing uh, concrete posts because fence posts are expensive and time consuming to bash into the ground. And we have a very sophisticated gate mechanism. Yes. This we borrowed from some friends of ours. Thank you, Sue and Ian. Uh, that is the gate system. Works very well. It's very difficult one-handed, but... But it means that we can get the tractor through there if we need to, or the BCS rather, it's not a real tractor. One day I might build a proper gate. We definitely will, because it looks horrible, but it works. Uh, I mean, uh, a proper temporary gate so that it's a bit easier, but mm -hmm. it works fine. And we've had one instance of one chicken getting into the potatoes since we put the fence in. And we think she's kind of crawled under a gap underneath. Yeah, so which I've now put the hardware staples in so that there are no gaps for chicken. The cat also likes to burrow under, so he now <laughs> cannot do that either. And when we redo this garden wall and the beneficial hedgerow after we've laid our electrical cable, we will redo all this fencing as part of the project to do this trellis. And make it all nice. And make it nice, not with, you know, zip ties. <laughs> but for the moment, it's working fine. So I think that's it in terms of the, the chicken house construction, the fencing and infrastructure. But of course, there's one very important part, which we haven't done yet, which is collecting the eggs. Nice work, girls. So we definitely have three of our hens that are laying. The fourth one, cumin, is the special one. The dark brown one. The dark brown, smaller runt of the pack, of the flock, sorry. Um, we're not too sure. We haven't seen her come in and sit in a nest box. And there was one day where there was a egg left on the ramp. So it could have been her because she didn't know where to go because she's a bit special. Or could have just been someone in an emergency situation who couldn't get to the <laughs> nest box in time or because she was lining up to use a nest box and couldn't. Couldn't wait. When you've um, got to go, you've got to go. That's yeah, it. and the poppy, the... Madam. The madam, that's an excellent word for her. <laughs> she often dominates one of the nest boxes for over an hour, even though she's laid. So, and she doesn't like cumin very much. So maybe that's also putting cumin off. So we're still waiting. Jury's out on whether she's laying or not. But, you know, three out of four, pretty good. So that is the bulk of the daily chores. Uh, it's definitely a front-loaded type of situation. But of course, we look after them throughout the day. We make sure that they've got enough uh, water, that they're not off somewhere crazy in the burning hot sun. And uh, occasionally we give them a few treats and scraps when we're having lunch or having dinner. Um, so we're gonna go off and get some work done and we'll pick this up towards the end of the day uh, for the final proceedings of the daily chicken routine. Come on, girls. Come on. Coco, get out of the way. You were not a chicken. Here, Sesame. Hold on. I need to make your pieces smaller for you. No, that's for Cumin. Poppy. Look, you have that one. This is the waste cherries from our recent cherry harvest that I de-pipped and have kept right at the back of the fridge so they're very cold, which in this hot weather is really nice for me. 
First you gotta feed Poppy because she's the madam. When she's done, then the others will come back. Yes. Aren't you? Little guts. Someone asked us a question recently about how the cat is taking to the new chicken <laughs> arrivals. He's very uh, hesitant, cautious. And a little bit jealous. Very jealous. He's giving a bit more cocoa to him. Someone actually asked what his name is. His name is Coco, short for coconut. All of our cats have, or this cat and our previous cat, uh, are named after nuts. We've also had other cats that are not ours that we have named. So we currently have a walnut who breaks into our tent in the evenings. And there used to be one of the neighbors had a cat that we named Hazel, not, uh, until we learned her real name. You're back. So you just need a bit of attention. I know how you feel. It has been very, very warm today. We've been hiding in the house. I've been doing lots of video editing work and uh, we thought we'd come out to see what the chickens were up to, but it is a little bit too warm to be out here. But because I've been editing the video that you're actually watching now, which always sounds a bit weird, uh, I've remembered some things that I forgot to talk about earlier. One of those is people always like the kind of reuse recycle stories and so door handles here the uh the piece of string is actually a an old guy rope from the tent fly that we had that got damaged over the winter uh so we reused those to make the the pulley the pulley ropes and then the little wooden circular thing on the end is from an old curtain rail which came out of one of the downstairs rooms so we like a bit of that the, the other thing to talk about, when we were building the coop, we're, one of the things that we mentioned, I'm gonna stand in the shade here because it's very, very warm, um, was about the, the overhanging flat roof because we were gonna put some guttering on and a rain barrel. That is still the plan, we just haven't got to it yet. But it hasn't rained since we built this coop, or not really anyway, we might've had like 0.5 of a millimeter or something, so, Rainwater capture is not a priority right now, although it will be very useful in the future. But relating to the roof, something that we are planning to do for when we do get to the rainy season is to extend the roof slightly to offer a little bit more protection over the front wall and where the, the kind of chicken door is. Because when we did have a tiny bit of rain, the, there was a bit of swelling of the door and it got stuck, So uh, as I think we mentioned earlier. So that is something that we are planning to do as a design improvement. Anyway, there's still an hour or so before we give them their evening feed. Uh, I think it's time for my evening glass of wine. Glass of homebrew? Oh yes, please. That's better than feeding chickens. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> you got done in my face. <laughs> So who thought keeping chickens was so easy? You just gotta feed, feed them. them. <laughs> I also put some, not mealworms, the other ones. Oh, black soldier fly larvae. Black soldier fly larvae. Let me show you. Oh, sorry, Poppy. I know you don't like when I get too close. It stinks. But they... So this is a treat for them and it's high in calcium. So yeah. it's considered a healthy treat. Exactly, it's got less fat in it than mealworms, which is the most popular chicken tree. Um, and what's funny is when I gave it to them the first time, they were like, what are you giving me? Now, they quite like it. Thanks. It's like a pumpkin.
love Carter. <laughs> So there we go, we're almost at the end of the day. It is 10 to 8. The chickens are back in their yard. And the amazing thing about chickens is they actually put themselves to bed. When the sun goes down, they're like, that must be bedtime. And they just walk their way up the ramp and find a nice roost. And then we come back and close the semi-manual doors and all is good. I think they're getting one final treat. They do love that seed. And, <laughs> and before tomorrow morning, we will refresh their seed, soak it and ferment it overnight. Be ready for another day tomorrow. But that's pretty much it for our day in the life of a chicken. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing a bit of a day in the life of us as well. But that's it for now. We will see you in the next one. Bye for now. So we have a selection of Portuguese and Italian delights. It's pretty good, right? Sorry, I'm too busy eating. <laughs> too busy eating. <laughs>